Hi and uh, welcome to Like Voices. You might actually remember this game from the demo I played. Since I did play the demo of this game and it was finally released yesterday by the time of this recording. So I am hyped and I'm really curious if they really edit the voice acting that was missing in the demo. So let's get started and see. You'll need to make various decisions throughout Lego Voices. Here are a few details to keep in mind. So choices are timed. Time running out isn't something to completely avoid. In some cases, not getting involved can open new possibilities. Other choices are untimed. These options are only determined whether Kika has any special affection for another character or not. If you survive until the second night, the story will branch off into one of five different plot lines based on your earlier decisions. The other characters cannot manage all situations in the various plot lines, regardless of what you do. If your character isn't making it, try getting that plot with a different set of survivors, or having the same group of characters venture through the same with some other storyline way. Becoming close up to someone can add or remove future choices options, uh, choice options and change how some scenes play out. Your decision to build that connection may not go unnoticed by the other characters. Earning the full amount of affection with the certain characters can require getting into specific plot lines. Alright. Mm -hmm. My grip on my lantern tightened as the fog around us thickened. While the forests in this area are relatively safe compared to sin laws, I cannot help but feel my hair stand on end the further we get. My free hand fingers at the hilt of my sword, something akin to a nervous reflex. Have you seen it before? <gasps> Voice acting. I don't have to read and give them voices. I am happy. I'm sorry. I'm so happy. Pumel breaks the silence, either sensing my unease or assorting his own. I hope it's the latter. I haven't. I've had no reason to go near this cursed lake until now. What of you? Pumel scratches his chin casually as though I asked what his favorite food is. I traveled a long way around it once before. Not so pleasant. Something about it just frays your nerves. Although, even being near it is enough. So, I'm not the only one who feels it. A sense of relief hits me, but not enough to undo the buzzing of anxiety. The like, sin laws must try the best to avoid, most try the best to avoid it all their lives. The hundreds who die attempting to cross its unearthly black water dragged to death by the creatures lurking within aren't secret. No wonder you were assigned this mission. There are few who would have first-hand experience with the plan, uh, with the place, even if from a distance. He'll probably keep being picked whenever we need someone to cross for however long he's with us. The Mel shrugs bringing my attention back to the dark path before us. At least we're taking the bridge this time. It'll only take two days instead of double that, and the sooner this place is behind us, the better. It would be preferable not to risk it. But time is of the essence. We don't really have a choice. One of our allied villages, Himer, Himer is being harassed by Brigadier's band of rush ruffians. We don't have many guards to send as an assist, only Bumel and myself. The least we can do is arrive before we are too late to be of any use. Well, if you know of the attack, that means someone had to travel from that village to your village, meaning at least two days went by, if not four, if they went around the lake. Unless they send a bird or something like that, I don't know. But still, time went by, 
And if you are going um, there, crossing the bridge over the lake, means you lose two dice, and by that time they will probably be gone. Meaning, it's a rather useless travel you're doing there. But these kinds of squabbles happen often, but have to be put down at least. Yeah, down lest they turn into blood crutch or all out war. The last we heard, neither option was that far off. I can also see why they chose you to come out here. I glance at the male, an eyebrow raised. A slight smile plays across his You're always so calm and so serious. Nothing can get to you. You're the best choice they had. A smile now tucks at my own lips. I would like to thank him, but that wouldn't be so calm and serious as he just described. And if that's how he sees me, I'd like to keep it that way. My lack of reaction only makes his smile grow, and he chuckles a bit before refocusing on the path. I do the same. I, it wouldn't be right to let my guard down in a place like this, but Mel appears to feel differently, however. You know the town on the other side of the lake, though. It's not so similar to ours. If all goes well, perhaps we'll have enough time to enjoy the new area. For the most part, I ignore him, nodding when applicable. Mel is a talkative sort, and if chatting helps keep his worries down and his sort hand ready, I have no complaints. After time, the thick fog surrounding us begins to clear. A slick wooden dock comes into view, and with it, the sound of water gently lapping at its side. Mel shifts beside me, stretching his lantern arm as far as it will go. He seems tense. Someone's already here. A young woman stands by the dock, eyeing us warily. Does she intend to cross tonight? Evidently, she has the same question. As we step up next to her, it's clear she isn't simply passing by. She's waiting. The stranger nods curtly to us. Margaret, Kiga the Steadfast. Bamele. Hello. I still don't like the way you pronounce your own name. I am sorry. I will never call you Bamele. Bamele. Whatever. There's a stuffy silence. Margaret turns to gaze out across the lake, expression unclear with not much to say, but Mel and I do the same. From here, the black surface of the lake looks disarmingly calm. Wind rushes across its surface and sound like whispering. A sound like whispering, though perhaps it actually is whispering. I concentrate, trying to place the difference, searching for breaks in rhythm. After a few seconds, I feel foolish. It doesn't matter what the noise is or whether I hear them or not, we are not alone. The Nixie are out there. Feeling that I can't quite shake tells me they are already noticed the little group of people on the shore. It feels hostile. My stomach sinks and instead and I instead address Bamel. Where is the guide? Unless he's on the center island or on the complete other side, your guess is as good as mine. It's dark as pitch out there. Panic rises inside me. Panic I try hard to We can't cross without him and we need to get going soon. You can't cross with him either. The woman behind us, Margaret, cuts in with something like a sword. What? Sword. I know the guide will be here tonight. I have already made arrangements with him to cross. Mel and I share a look. The woman seems haughty and willing to put up a fuss. I have his word he'll take me today. It would be wiser for the two of you to begin the trip around if you're really in such a hurry. Or you can make camp here and wait for him to make the trip back if you prefer. I don't need to turn my attention to, to the Mel to know if he's wild up. I step in before he can say something rash. Even if that is so, my companion and I must begin the trip tonight. Margaret is unimpressed and opens her mouth to argue further. We'll wait for the guide to arrive 
before coming to a conclusion about any of this. She clams her mouth shut then and lets out a sigh. You can do as you like. With the matter tentatively settled, Vermel moves away. His fingers begin his finger begins to tap loudly against the top of his hilt. He shifts from one foot to another, then groans. What's that bastard even up to? I almost visibly start, but manage to restrain myself. He he probably doesn't know any better. I'm sure of that. It's not worth mentioning. With a mouth like that, you shouldn't even have the right to ask the guy to take you across. How ludicrous. He's faced far worse than a bit of foul language. Do you know anything that's happened with this lake? I know enough. Margaret is clearly not convinced, but she shrugs and makes a show of tuning her back to the him. The guide's father is Garvin the Exemplar. Garvin never accepted the guide as his son, all the way up until he died in this lake. Your statement could be seen as tasteless. And I still don't understand why this matters, but hey... Oh. Jamel rubs the back of his neck, his face regretful. My apologies to the guide. I didn't mean it that way. I never knew about his... well, that. A smile spreads across my face. One eye quickly wipe away. He really did just misspeak. The silence slowly stretches between the three of us, growing more awkward with each passing second. Margaret seems irritated and now abashed. this one last time so I'll go for you quite informed Margaret since I want to um, be on her good side and maybe get her to stay behind this time right I doubt I can but you know maybe it's been years since the time of Garvin the exemplar it's impressive you knew Margaret smiles, lifting her chin into the air. The over-exaggerated action is somehow pleasant rather than belittling. She's much happier than I'd had... I had anticipated. Yes, I do like to stay informed. And you knew too. Good. This lake shouldn't be allowed to swallow even history itself. My town, the one where I was born at least, was also Garvin's hometown. I was very young when he passed. The entire village went into mourning. People broke down crying in the streets. I'll never forget it. He meant much to everyone who knew him. Alright, so that makes a bit more sense now that I know more about this history, but still, why? What saying or asking what he is doing? Be tasteless, I don't get it. I seriously don't. If someone knows, they can leave a comment down below and tell me. Oh, I have no such connections. I merely read about it. She pauses, seeming to scan the air in front of her for something to say. I'm sorry for your loss. Alright. It's all right. Thank you. My town may have taken pride in Garvin, the example, and what he achieved, but we weren't the ones who lost the most. That would be his family. We, re uh, we each remain locked inside our own thoughts, not another word passing between us. Eventually, a small light appears on the bridge ahead. Gently swaying through the foggy air, it gets closer and closer until it becomes apparent the figure carrying a lantern. That must be the guide, although I can't shake the ghostly aura it gives off. The figure steps onto the shore, but we wait for him to approach us instead of going to meet him. None of us are sure how, to, how close to the water we can get before it's no longer safe. He stops in front of us and simply stares. Are you the guide of Simlos? The man nods. He has a sharp face and very eyes. Well, that's grand. 
We would like an escort across the lake. Ramel motions to the two of us and Margaret approaches a strange smile on her face. Hello! It's good to see you again. I'm ready to cross, as we've agreed upon. The guide turns to face her as well, face remaining unchanged. It must not be a lie, he would have had to say something otherwise. She really does have preference to travel with him. That's a problem. Is there a way we can all begin the trip tonight? Yes, I will allow all three of you to go. But with that many, at least one will die before we reach the other side. I throw my brow. It's a disturbing addendum and one offered with little emotion attached. The Mel clears back, asking without asking what we're supposed to do with such circumstances. You should go around. The sentence hangs in the air, the second half unspoken, if you want to live. We don't have time for that! There are people counting on us for protection. Why does she need to go? Oof. He jerks a finger at Margaret, though, whose face contorts with anger. I don't need to explain myself to you. My journey has already been put off once, and I was promised I could go today. I will be going under any circumstances. Oh, she meets Bamel's eyes with a gaze of steel. He starts to speak and she cuts in. An extra day or two shouldn't be that much of a problem for you. Whoever you're meeting can surely wait such a tiny amount longer. Patience is a virtue after all. The night is only so long, and if we're still on the bridges when the sun comes up, we'll all die as they sink back below the surface. If you don't decide soon, no one will be going. The guide is dispassionate, stoic. I would almost feel something's wrong with him if I didn't share the trait myself. The mal puts me to side. To the side, jaw clenched. That tough. woman isn't armed. His voice is low. He darts a glance at Margaret. We can easily get her to back off if we make this into an actual fight. After all, we have to go tonight, yes? If one of us really is to die, it'll be her. Would staying be a worse fate than her death? I stare at the dock, refusing to meet the male's eyes, and try to keep my voice as level as possible. We don't know her situation. This isn't a decision we can make for her. What? Pamel leans in closer, apparently having missed what I said. I remove the sympathy for her and my response when I speak again. The guide won't accept something like that, I assume. His face is grim. Then what else do you have in mind? First of all, you and I cannot split up. Either we both stay, or we both go. Right. That's not a question. I cross my arms, I hand on my chin, I have full confidence in my abilities and the mouth, but there is no reason not to believe in the guide. I believe the guide knows exactly what he's talking about. If we go, he might not be able to give the group the attention we each deserve. That would mean we truly would be putting Margaret's life at risk on top of our own. <sighs> I believe and I believe go. you. Well, thank you, Bumal. Bumal's reply is firm. My steadfastness seems almost weak in comparison to its certainty. He addresses the guide. We shouldn't waste more time. Let's shove off. The guide slowly turns around without even a nod to show his agreement. Margaret stares at Bumal and me, something of a resolve in her gaze. Then she follows after the guide. At least she didn't insist we stay behind. We should do what we can to protect her. It's our fault she's being put in even further danger. Exactly my thoughts. We will take care of everything. Maybe I'm being naive, but I have no intentions of letting anyone fall victim to this lake tonight. Those monsters can starve. He turns to follow the others across. I will protect everyone on this trip. I will. We will make it through this. And I step onto the dock and join them. The shorter since I don't know, I don't think it's that long. 
of a game, so I will make it shorter parts that are more manageable to watch. 